Hello! In this video I'm going to explain to you how a ledge works or a flip-flop or a RS flip-flop. There are actually several names that usually mean the same thing so don't get confused by that. If you are new to this thing, most important thing first, a ledge is a memory unit or memory element so you can store a state for example you put in an, a 1 and the 1 gets stored even if you take away the 1 from the input. One big difference between this video and most of the videos on YouTube is that I'm not going to sh just show you a circuit and say, well, this if you put in one, then zero comes out. But rather, I'm going to step by step build up a circuit to create a latch. I hope this makes understanding it much easier. So let's get started. This is the first idea for a memory un unit. We have a, a single input here. We have an OR gate and the output of the OR gate goes down here and arrives at the input of the OR gate. So whatever signal is coming, it's circling around. Let's check this out with a nice animation. We have a zero coming in and the zero is circling around. Not too fancy. Let's change this to a one. If we change this to a one, the one comes out here and the one is circling. That's also not too fancy, but now it's getting fancy. If we change this one here to zero now, then the one keeps circling. So whatever we put in here now, the one always remains here. So in some kind of way, this circuit remembered that in some point in time we set it to one. So it's kind of like a memory unit, but it has the flaw, and that's the big problem here, that the one is circling forever, as you can already see. So we cannot set it back to zero, that's a problem. So we need something like a control input that sets it back to zero. Uh, the first idea might be to add another OR gate here. Because we started with OR, why not try another OR? It would look like this. No circling now. Let's do this by logic. We put in a 1 here, get a 1 here, go down here. The 1 is still here. It doesn't matter what the control input is. The 1 comes out here and goes back in here. Even if we set this to 0 now, the 1 keeps circling. So we didn't really gain anything. So apparently this does not seem like the right direction. So it might seem the right direction to use an end gate instead. Unfortunately, this is also not the right direction. I leave it up to you to analyze this circuit and find its flaws. Instead, we want to go back to this one that apparently did not do well. Let's just keep this in mind for a second. Remember the ors, okay? And now we're going to jump to a totally different circuit that's just containing off two knots that are connected together. We have a zero here and let's check what's happening. The zero is th through there and then it switches to one, goes down here, switches back to zero, goes on, goes to zero, uh, goes to one again and comes down here. I think you already figured out that it's always zero on the top and always one in the bottom. Let's check again. We have the zero here, going here, switches to 1, goes here, switches to 0, and comes down here again. So what's actually happening here is that the 1 and the 0 is constantly switching. So we have 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, sorry, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0. Okay, I hope this worked. But if you put in a output O here, this is for output, then this will always show you 0. So this output thinks actually this, that the signal is constantly 0 even if it's actually switching constantly, right? It's always 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1. But here it looks static. Okay, so far so good. But let's think of, okay, question, how did actually this zero, the first zero arrive here? We actually have to introduce it. So we will uh, add a OR gate here to introduce the zero. Now, now that's a real circuit. So we introduce a zero and we do the same again. The zero is here, switches to one, goes there, switches to zero, comes up here. So it's basically the same that I just showed you. But because we have a new input here, we can also change this input to a one. And let's go on the right side here. We change the input to a one and let's check out what's happening now. So now the one is here and the one becomes zero here, goes down here, switches to one and goes up here. So what actually happens is here, the one is always on top and the zero is always in the bottom. So it's the inverse of what was happening there. That's kind of interesting. And now let's change this A back to a zero. What's happening now? I mean, it's still one 
one of the inputs is still one, so it's going to be a one here. It's going there, switches to zero, goes down, switches to one, goes up. Okay, that's pretty interesting. And now let's for a second think that these not gates are not there. Then actually we have the same circuit that I showed you in the beginning, the first idea. So with this circuit, we basically have the same idea as before, but now we have two different states. We have one state in the bottom and one state in the top, as you saw here, right? And by introducing a single one in the top here, so there was zero, zero. And if we change this to a one, then the whole circuit changes. And this on top is one and this in the bottom is zero. So we kind of inverted the, let's say, the not direction, how the values are rotating. I think you get the idea. So this zero becomes one. This is what I basically want to say. Okay, and here is the important thing. How do we actually get that? It's important that we just switched the direction and it's important to note how we actually got there. We got there by the idea of we have two NOT gates here. And the idea was to just introduce an OR gate between the NOT gates. So we have an input there. And this input, this input gets one. It has the effect that it turns the circling values around so that the one is actually there where it was set. So if the one was set here, then the one is circling around in the top. Okay. So if we want to change it back, we just need another or down here. Let's see what's happening. The one goes here, the one that just came from there, one goes here, is inverted to a zero, goes here. And let's imagine we put in a one from B. Now here we get a one. So this is not all, not zero anymore. The one goes up, is inverted to zero, and goes up here. This is now zero, this is now zero, so we get a zero at the end here. Goes down, gets inverted, comes here, and of course goes through and goes back up again. So if you look in the almost vanished part here, we actually got the same direction as before. And now, even if we change this one to a zero now, it is still the same rotation pattern. So even if this is now a zero, the still the one still is on the bottom here. So this is always going to be one now, and this part is always going to be zero now, until the A is set to one again. And in that situation, this is going to be one again, and this is going to be zero again. Let's check out both patterns. On one side, we have the one. So the one is rot rotating in the top. And in this picture, the one is on input B in the bottom. So the one is rotating in the bottom. So this is always one. And this is always one. To make it differently visible, we can do like this. So all this is one, this is zero, and all this is one, and all this is zero. Because this was one, all this got one. I think you can Think of it like a pen. Let's check this one out here. Imagine we have this rotation on top is the one and on the bottom there is the zero rotating. And now I want to make this become one. So like a pen, I just click once cha -ching, and all the zeros becomes one, become ones. And now I can actually change this back to zero and nothing changes. The ones stay in the bottom. If I now put it a one here, then the ones go on top again. So if I choose to put a one in the top, the ones come in the top. If I choose to put a one in the bottom, the ones come in the bottom. Let's remove that one, it's zero, but the state still remains. It remembers the state, so it's actually a storage. It's a memory device already. And now again, we switch this to one, and this becomes one again. So this is actually already a ledge. So I could actually finish this video because now you have the logic but it's still not in the shape of what you see in the books. So what I'm now going to explain is how you can actually morph this thing into what you see in the books. First, let's rotate these not gates a little bit. So you move them up a little bit. And now you see there's almost no space in here, almost no space for our output here. So let's move the output here on the left side. That's the output. And there's also not much space for the knots, so we remove these triangles, move the dots up, and actually they become NOR gates now. 
And now there's actually no top and no bottom anymore, but left and right. But don't worry, the logic is still the same. Just remember a different pattern. If we, if you put in a one here, then this lane becomes one. Okay. If you put in a one here, then do you call it lane? Then this lane becomes one. So the lane, you could say the lane next to the input or the lane before the nor. So if you put in a one here, then before the nor becomes a one. If you put in a one here, before the nor becomes a one. Let's remove this for a second again. Now I want to, that was too much. Now I want to talk about this output over here. Like already said, this is constantly switching the states, right? On this, it's like zero, one, zero, one, zero, one, zero, one, zero, one. Zero, one. But for the output O, it's always zero. So it's a static value over here. In the same manner, we want to have another output here that always gives us the one. So the other value, you know, we have the left value and the right value. value. So we want one value, one output for the left value and one output for the right value. value. We don't give it a name at the moment because it's difficult. Okay, next chapter. When you set this to one, okay, that was a very German one. When you set this to one, then I already told you that this becomes one. That means that the output becomes one. And when you said B to one, you have to remove that. They must not be one at the same time. Then actually this becomes one, but this becomes zero. So you could actually call this A input the set input and the B input could be the reset input. I know that's written not very nice. So we change it like this. And now this is the set input and the reset input from the point of view of the output here. Of course, you can simply switch them and like it's your free. It's up to your interpretation, which one of you you, you use as output and which one is not the output. But for now, this is set and here's our output. And if you set set to one, then the output becomes one. Okay, that looks more like a R S flip flop, but it's not right. It's not the correct shape. So we have to turn this one around and we have to turn the output here around. So let's slowly start moving this around. Okay, I hope you're still with me. Now it's getting difficult. Check this out. This nor, the, the lane comes out here of the nor and goes into the nor here, okay? Now we flip it over to here, comes out here and still goes inside the same nor, okay? Still the same lane. We just flipped it over. Next, we want to make straight lines and not like these round lines. So we make it like this. This looks much more like in the textbooks. And let's now check this one out. Let's take a look at this lane here or at this wire. This is, this is our output. It's difficult to speak English for a long time. Um, actually, if we put the output here, it would still be the same value, right? If we put it here, still be the same value. If we put it here, still be the same value here, still the same value. So let's put the output at a place where it's um, easier to write. So we put it here. Okay, let's check this out without the ones and the zeros. Oh, it looks much better. And adjust the reset. And now we have a nice diagram actually. Okay, it looks much different than the circle we had in the first place, but let's check out the logic again. If you set this to one, then the lane or the wire before the nor also becomes one, okay? That means that also the output becomes one. We have to remove this. If you set reset to one, then again, the wire before the nor becomes one. And let's check this out. And this output becomes one. And this output becomes actually zero. Now I want to talk about the name of this output. So that we need to remove that. Let's imagine set and reset are one at the same time. This should actually never happen, but let's imagine they are one at the same time. What's happening is that this output becomes zero and this output becomes zero. And now this is very, I think a very rare case, but let's imagine set and reset go to zero at exactly the same time. What would happen now? Okay, we have a zero here, we have a zero here. The zero goes up until here, and this zero goes up until here, 
And now both are zero, and here also both are zero. So this will become one. And this one will also become one. So this is not zero anymore, and this is also not zero anymore, but both are one. As both are one now, the one goes up here until here, so this zero becomes actually one. The one also travels until here. This becomes one. So now we have a one here. So this is not a one anymore, but becomes both become zero. And therefore this also becomes zero. So what's happening is they, I think you call it this flatters. So it switches between zero and one, one very, very fast. This is like an indefinite, undefined, sorry, undefined state. So that said, or that being said, set and reset shall never be one at the same time because we, you might run into this undefined behavior. And then you figure out that if, oh wait, let's first remove this. Okay, now. If set and reset are never one at the same time, then you always know that this output is always the inverse value of this output. So you can actually write it as not O, O for output, you remember? Because if you set this to one, this will become one. Let's check this out. This will become one and this will become zero. If you make this a one, then this will become one. Let's check this out. This zero will become one and this one becomes zero. Uh, also, this one is going to be zero. So it's always the inverse. So you can actually write it as output O and output not O. Don't get confused. I was always confused because I thought, well, if this is not O, then it should be something like this. There should, there must be a not gate here and this must not be connected. So don't think of it as a circuit that inverts the O, but rather a logical conclusion. So this O concludes that there is a not O in the top. Just think of it that way. So this not is not because of the circuit, but rather because of a naming. Okay, that long story being said, uh, now we have a nice O here. Sorry, not O, not O, of course. Okay, now we're almost finished. That was a long talk. We're almost finished and we are on slide 32, um, but we have one problem. This is actually an SR flip-flop, but we want an RS flip-flop. I don't know why you call it R. I don't know why you need RS. Anyway, apparently some very intelligent guy thought, well, set on the top for setting and reset on the bottom for resetting. Well, that sounds way too easy and way too natural. We should like make it more difficult so students think they are stupid. So let's switch this around to make it more difficult. And whoa, 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 wait, this is O for output? No, 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 that's way too easy. We change it to Q. Why Q? I have no idea, but Q sounds much better than O because output is actually written with a Q. Okay, no, sorry, I'm just joking. Um, I don't know why this is Q. I don't know why the reset must be on top. Actually, I find it much more easy to understand if the set is on top and this is called O for output. But well, this is what your book says, so I should come up with this thing at the end. The logic, of course, didn't change, just the names changed, okay? So still set, if you set set to one, then again, this will become one. Same story as always, this one become one and this one becomes zero. Okay, I uh, yeah, that's it actually for this video. I hope you understood everything. If you have any questions, ask in the comments. Uh, maybe also check out the comments. Sometimes people write interesting questions that might also already answer your questions, check out the video description in case I make an update there. That being said, thank you very much for watching. And the voice should go down.